I surprised my pregnant GF with a nursery but she left me. My ex-wife dropped a bombshell and now my GF thinks I'm still hung up on my ex. I, 42M, never thought I'd find myself in this situation. My girlfriend Mia, 28F, and I have been together for three years, and our relationship has been a whirlwind of emotions from the start. We met at the annual company picnic, I'm a senior manager in operations, and she had just joined the marketing department fresh out of college. I remember that day vividly. The sun was beating down, and I was manning the grill, flipping burgers for my co-workers. Mia walked up, introduced herself, and asked for a veggie burger with a cheeky grin. We got to talking, and I was immediately struck by her wit and enthusiasm. She had this infectious laugh that made everyone around her smile. At first, I was hesitant to pursue anything. The age gap was significant, and as a divorced father of two, I wasn't sure I was ready to dive back into a serious relationship. Plus, workplace romances can be tricky to navigate. But Mia was persistent. She'd find excuses to stop by my office, always with a clever quip or a funny story from her day. Slowly but surely, she wore down my defenses. We started having lunch together, then after work drinks. Before I knew it, we were dating. Mia's energy and optimism were like a breath of fresh air in my life. She made me feel young again, reminding me of the carefree guy I used to be before the responsibilities of marriage and parenthood. Last year, after two years of dating, we decided to move in together. It was a big step, especially considering my kids, Ethan, 14M, and Sophie, 12F. My ex-wife Olivia, 40F, and I divorced five years ago after 15 years of marriage. We had been high school sweethearts, but over time, we grew apart. The spark that had once burned so bright had fizzled out, leaving us more like roommates than lovers. The divorce was amicable, and we've managed to maintain a cordial co-parenting relationship. Mia was understandably nervous about meeting my kids. She'd never dated anyone with children before, and she was worried they wouldn't accept her. I remember the night before their first meeting, Mia was a bundle of nerves, changing her outfit three times and practicing her nice to meet you in the mirror. But she needn't have worried. Mia's natural charm worked its magic on Ethan and Sophie just as it had on me. She quickly won them over with her fun-loving nature. She'd organize movie nights, complete with homemade popcorn and an impressive array of candy. She helped Ethan with his math homework, explaining complex problems in a way that finally made sense to him. And she started teaching Sophie how to bake, filling our home with the smell of cookies and laughter every weekend. Seeing how well Mia got along with my kids filled me with joy. It felt like all the pieces of my life were finally falling into place. I started to imagine a future with Mia, maybe even having more children together. About six months ago, that imagined future suddenly became a reality. Mia told me she was pregnant. It was unexpected, we had been using protection, but we were both excited about this new chapter. We spent evenings cuddled on the couch, looking at baby name books and discussing nursery themes. Mia would often place my hand on her belly, eager for me to feel the first kicks. Last week, I decided to surprise Mia by setting up the nursery while she was away on a business trip. I took a few days off work and threw myself into the project. I painted the walls a soft yellow, gender neutral, as we had decided to keep the baby's sex a surprise. I assembled the crib that my parents had gifted us, arranging a menagerie of stuffed animals inside. I hung up framed prints of classic children's book illustrations and set up a comfortable rocking chair by the window. The coup de grace was a hand-painted mural on one wall, a whimsical forest scene with friendly animals peeking out from behind trees. I'm no artist, but I'd spent weeks practicing in secret, determined to create something special for our child. As I stood back and surveyed my work, I felt a surge of pride. I couldn't wait to show Mia. When she got home from her trip, I led her to the room blindfolded, my heart pounding with anticipation. I imagined her eyes filling with happy tears, her arms thrown around me in gratitude. Instead, when I removed the blindfold, Mia's face fell. She looked around the room with an expression I couldn't quite read, confusion? Disappointment? She mumbled a quiet, thanks and left the room, leaving me standing there bewildered and hurt. For the rest of the evening, Mia was distant. She picked at her dinner and went to bed early, claiming jet lag. I tossed and turned all night, replaying her reaction in my mind trying to figure out what had gone wrong. It wasn't until the next night that Mia finally explained what was bothering her. She sat me down on the couch, her hands twisting nervously in her lap. She admitted that seeing the nursery had made everything feel too real, too fast. She confessed that she'd been having second thoughts about becoming a mother at her age. She wasn't sure if she was ready for such a big responsibility. I was shocked. We had talked about having kids before, and Mia had always seemed enthusiastic. She'd coo over babies in the park and send me links to cute onesies she found online. But now, faced with the reality of impending parenthood, she was backpedaling. Mia explained that she thought she'd have more time to establish her career and travel before settling down. She had dreams of backpacking through Europe, of climbing the corporate ladder. Now she felt like she was being forced into a role she wasn't prepared for. I tried to reassure her that we'd figure it out together. I reminded her of how great she was with Ethan and Sophie, how natural motherhood would come to her. But my words seemed to fall on deaf ears. 
Mia just got more upset, saying she felt suffocated and needed some space to think. The next morning, I woke up to find Mia packing a bag. She said she was going to stay with her sister for a few days to clear her head. I wanted to protest, to beg her to stay so we could work things out. But the look in her eyes stopped me. She needed this space, and I had to respect that. It's been five days now, and Mia still hasn't come home. She's barely responding to my messages, just sending brief texts to let me know she's okay. I'm worried sick about her and our baby. I don't know what to do. Should I give her more space? Try to talk things out? I'm scared of losing my family before it's even started. I love Mia and want to support her, but I also can't imagine not being involved in my child's life. The thought of missing out on first steps, first words, first everything, it's unbearable. Am I being selfish for wanting her to come home and work things out? Should I have seen this coming? I keep replaying our relationship in my mind, wondering if I missed some signs. Was Mia always this unsure about our future, and I was too blinded by my own happiness to notice? Or is this just a case of cold feet that we can work through? I feel like I'm at a crossroads, and I have no idea which way to turn. On one hand, I want to respect Mia's feelings and give her the space she needs. On the other hand, every day she's away feels like torture. I miss her laugh, her smile, the way she'd absentmindedly run her fingers through my hair while we watch TV. And then there's the baby to consider. Regardless of what happens between Mia and me, there's a child on the way, my child. I've always prided myself on being a good father to Ethan and Sophie. The idea of not being there for this baby from day one is heartbreaking. I'm lost and confused, caught between my love for Mia, my excitement about the baby, and my fear of losing everything. How did we go from planning our future together to this uncertainty in the blink of an eye? I don't know what the coming days will bring, but I hope Mia and I can find a way to navigate this crisis together. Update 1, it's been two weeks since my last post, and to say it's been a roller coaster would be an understatement. After days of minimal communication, Mia finally agreed to meet me for coffee to talk things through. We chose a quiet cafe in a neutral part of town, away from our usual haunts. When Mia walked in, my heart clenched. She looked tired and stressed, with dark circles under her eyes and her usually bouncy curls pulled back in a messy bun. She'd lost weight, her clothes hanging a bit looser on her frame. It took everything in me not to rush over and wrap her in my arms. We ordered our drinks, a black coffee for me, a decaf latte for her, and found a secluded table in the corner. For a few moments, we just sat in awkward silence, neither quite sure how to begin. Finally, Mia took a deep breath and started talking. She revealed that she'd been feeling conflicted about the pregnancy for months but was afraid to tell me. She felt pressured to play the role of the perfect girlfriend and soon-to-be mother, even though she was terrified inside. As Mia spoke, memories started flooding back. I remembered how she'd sometimes go quiet when we discussed baby names, or how she'd changed the subject when I brought up childcare options. At the time, I'd chalked it up to normal nerves. Now, I realized I'd been missing signs all along. Mia also admitted that she felt intimidated by my experience as a parent. She was worried she'd never measure up to the memories of my life with Olivia and the kids. She confessed to feeling like an outsider sometimes when I reminisce about Ethan and Sophie's early years. This revelation hit me hard. I'd always tried to include Mia in every aspect of my life, but I hadn't considered how my past might be affecting her. I realized I'd been so caught up in my own excitement about starting a new family that I hadn't noticed Mia's struggles. We talked for hours, our coffee going cold as we discussed our fears and expectations. I apologized for moving too fast with the nursery and promised to be more attentive to her needs. Mia, in turn, apologized for running away instead of talking to me sooner. By the end of our conversation, we'd come to some decisions. Mia agreed to come home, but we decided to turn the nursery back into a regular room for now. We both felt it was important to take things one step at a time and not rush into anything. To address Mia's concerns about her career, we came up with a plan. There was a promotion coming up in her department that she'd been eyeing but had been hesitant to pursue due to the pregnancy. I encouraged her to go for it, assuring her that we'd find a way to balance work and family. We also started researching parenting classes and support groups for young mothers, hoping to build a network that could help Mia feel more prepared. Things were looking up, and I felt cautiously optimistic. Mia moved back home, and we started to fall back into our old routines. We'd have dinner together, talking about our days and slowly rebuilding the easy rapport we'd once had. We even started taking evening walks in the park, Mia's hand resting on her slightly swollen belly as we strolled. However, our progress was interrupted by an unexpected complication. One evening, as we were clearing up after dinner, my phone rang. It was my ex-wife, Olivia. She rarely called unless it was about the kids, so I answered immediately, worried something might be wrong. Olivia said she needed to discuss something important about Ethan and Sophie, but she wanted to do it in person. Alarm bells went off in my head, but I agreed to meet her for lunch the next day. I didn't think much of telling Mia about the meeting, after all, we'd always been open about my co-parenting relationship with Olivia. The next day, I met Olivia at our usual lunch spot, a deli halfway between our offices. As soon as I saw her face, I knew something big was coming. 
Olivia has never been good at hiding her emotions, and today, she looked like she was bursting with news. She didn't beat around the bush. As soon as our sandwiches arrived, she dropped the bombshell, she'd been offered a fantastic job opportunity in another state and wanted to move with the kids. The position was a significant step up in her career, with better pay and more responsibilities. It was the kind of opportunity she'd been working towards for years. I was stunned. The thought of being separated from Ethan and Sophie was devastating. We'd always lived in the same city, making it easy to be present for school events, sports games, and impromptu ice cream runs. The idea of them being hours away, only seeing them on holidays and school breaks, made my heart ache. I returned home that evening, my mind reeling from this new development. Mia could tell something was wrong as soon as I walked in the door. She'd prepared dinner, my favorite pasta dish, and was waiting for me with a concerned look on her face. I felt compelled to share what had happened. As I recounted my conversation with Olivia, I saw Mia's expression change. Her brow furrowed, and she crossed her arms over her chest. As soon as I mentioned meeting Olivia, I saw Mia's walls go up. Before I could finish explaining, Mia cut me off. She accused me of still being hung up on my ex, saying that I jumped at Olivia's beck and call. She brought up old insecurities, questioning whether I was really over my previous marriage. I tried to explain that this was about the kids, not Olivia, but Mia wasn't hearing it. She stormed out of the house, saying she needed some air. I was left standing in the kitchen, surrounded by the smell of cooling pasta, feeling like my world was crumbling around me. Now I'm torn between fighting for custody of my older kids and trying to salvage my relationship with Mia and our unborn child. I feel like I'm being pulled in a million different directions, and I don't know how to make everyone happy, including myself. I love all my children, Ethan, Sophie, and this new baby on the way. But I also love Mia and want a future with her. How can I balance all of these competing needs and emotions? How do I choose between being there for my older kids and building a new family with Mia? As I sit here writing this update, I'm overwhelmed by the complexity of the situation. I know I need to make some difficult decisions, but right now, every option seems impossible. I'm hoping that with time and clearer heads, Mia and I can find a way forward together. But for now, I'm left waiting, worrying, and wondering what the future holds for all of us. Update 2, the past month has been a whirlwind of emotions and difficult decisions. After Mia left for the second time, I realized I needed to take a step back and evaluate my priorities. I spent a lot of time reflecting on what I truly wanted and needed, not just for myself but for all the people I love. I started by having an honest conversation with Olivia about her plans to move. We met at a neutral location, a park where we used to take the kids when they were younger. As we sat on a bench, watching families play and picnic around us, we had a long, sometimes heated discussion about what would be best for Ethan and Sophie. Olivia explained that this job was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It would allow her to advance her career significantly and provide a better life for the kids. She talked about the excellent schools in the area and the many extracurricular activities available. I shared my concerns about being separated from the kids and missing out on their daily lives. We argued about the impact of moving on their social lives and the stability they'd built here. There were moments when old resentments bubbled up, reminding us why we hadn't worked out as a couple. But as the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the park, we both realized we needed to put our personal feelings aside and focus on what was best for Ethan and Sophie. In the end, we agreed to a compromise. Olivia would take the job, but we'd revise our custody agreement. The kids would spend summers and every other holiday with me, and we'd set up regular video calls to stay connected. It wasn't an ideal solution, but it allowed the kids to stay with their mother during the school year while still maintaining a strong relationship with me. We also agreed that if the arrangement proved too difficult for the kids, we'd reassess in a year. As I left the park that evening, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. Sadness at the thought of seeing my kids less often, but relief that we'd found a way forward that prioritized their well-being. With that resolved, I turned my attention to Mia. She had been staying with her sister but agreed to meet me again. This time, we met at the beach, a place that held happy memories for us. We walked along the shore, the sound of crashing waves providing a soothing backdrop to our conversation. This time, our discussion was more open and honest than ever before. Mia confessed that she felt like she was living in the shadow of my past. She was worried about competing with the memories of my life with Olivia and the kids. I realized I had unintentionally been comparing our relationship to my previous marriage, which wasn't fair to Mia. We talked about our future and what we both wanted. Mia expressed her desire to have a career and travel, things she felt she might have to give up if we had a baby now. She shared her dreams of climbing the corporate ladder, of making a name for herself in the marketing world. She spoke of her longing to explore the world, to experience different cultures and cuisines. I shared my own fears about starting over with a new family at my age. I worried about having the energy to keep up with a newborn, about being mistaken for a grandparent at school events. I also expressed my concerns about balancing time between all my children, not wanting any of them to feel neglected. As we talked, the sun began to set, painting the sky in beautiful shades of orange and pink. We sat on the sand, watching the colors change, both of us deep in thought. After hours of talking, we came to a difficult decision. 
We both agreed that we weren't ready for a baby at this point in our lives. Mia decided to terminate the pregnancy, a choice that I supported even though it was painful. It was a heart-wrenching decision, but we both felt it was the right one for us at this time. This decision led to another revelation. We realized that our life goals and timelines were fundamentally different. Mia wanted to focus on her career and personal growth, while I was ready for a quieter, more settled life. The age gap that had once seemed inconsequential now felt like a chasm between us. With heavy hearts, we decided to end our relationship. It was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but we both knew it was the right thing to do. We agreed to part ways amicably, acknowledging that we had different paths to follow. As we walked back to our cars, hand in hand for the last time, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. Sadness for the future we had imagined together, but relief that we had been honest with each other and ourselves. The next few weeks were tough. I threw myself into work, trying to distract myself from the emptiness of the house. I had long conversations with Ethan and Sophie, explaining the changes that were coming. They were upset about the move, but also excited about the new experiences they'd have. Their resilience amazed me and gave me strength. As the dust settled, I started to see this period as a chance for a fresh start. I began to focus on myself, picking up old hobbies I'd abandoned years ago. I joined a local hiking group, rediscovering my love for nature. I even signed up for cooking classes, determined to expand my culinary skills beyond grilling and basic pasta dishes. Looking back, I can see how this difficult period has led to personal growth. While the future is still uncertain, I feel more grounded and self-aware than I have in years. Update 3, it's been 6 months since my last update, and I'm finally feeling ready to share how things have turned out. The journey hasn't been easy, but I've learned a lot about myself and what I truly want in life. The breakup with Mia was difficult, but ultimately, it was the right decision for both of us. We've managed to maintain a friendly relationship, which I'm grateful for. She's thriving in her career, having secured the promotion she was eyeing. Last week, she called to tell me she's planning a solo trip to Southeast Asia, something she's always dreamed of doing. Hearing the excitement in her voice, I felt genuinely happy for her. Seeing her happy and fulfilled, even if it's not with me, has brought me a sense of peace. As for me, I've been focusing on my relationship with Ethan and Sophie. The new custody arrangement has been challenging, but we're making it work. I've started flying out to visit them one weekend a month, in addition to our agreed-upon holiday and summer schedules. It's not perfect, but we're all adapting. During my visits, I make sure to pack in as much quality time as possible. We've started a tradition of trying a new activity each time I visit. Last month, we went rock climbing at an indoor gym. Watching Sophie fearlessly scale the wall and Ethan problem solve his way through a tricky route filled me with pride. Technology has been a lifesaver in staying connected between visits. We have weekly video chats where the kids show me their latest art projects or tell me about their day at school. It's not the same as being there in person, but it helps bridge the distance. The most unexpected development has been my growing friendship with Clara, 39F, another parent from Ethan's school. We met at a parent-teacher conference just before Olivia and the kids moved. We bonded over the challenges of co-parenting and staying connected with kids from a distance. What started as casual coffee meetups to discuss parenting strategies has slowly evolved into something more. Clara is divorced with a daughter the same age as Sophie. She understands the complexities of blended families and the challenges of dating in your 40s. Clara and I share similar life experiences and goals, which has made our connection feel natural and easy. We both value our independence but also enjoy companionship. We've been taking things slow, enjoying getting to know each other without the pressure of rushing into a serious commitment. Last month, Clara and I took our kids on a camping trip together. Watching all three children bond over roasting marshmallows and telling ghost stories around the campfire was a magical experience. It made me realize that family can take many forms, and there's always room for more love in our lives. This experience has taught me a lot about myself and what I truly want in life. I've learned the importance of open communication, of making sure all parties in a relationship are on the same page about their goals and expectations. I've also learned that it's okay for relationships to end if they're no longer serving both people's needs. I've discovered that I'm more adaptable than I ever gave myself credit for. The past year has brought more changes than I ever expected, but I've managed to roll with the punches and come out stronger on the other side. While the past year has been filled with ups and downs, I feel like I've finally found a balance that works for me. I'm excited about this new chapter in my life and looking forward to seeing what the future holds. I'm taking things one day at a time, focusing on being the best father I can be to Ethan and Sophie, nurturing my newfound friendship with Clara, and continuing to work on my personal growth. Life may not have turned out exactly as I planned, but I'm learning to embrace the unexpected twists and turns. After all, sometimes the most beautiful paths are the ones we never saw coming.